Imagine, if you will, an arid, desolate expanse of open ground. Perhaps a field of small stones beneath the burning sun. In the distance, through the heat haze, you can see something moving. Even so, it can't be any living creature. Nothing living can move that fast. It seems to almost blink from place to place, pausing for just a moment each time. In these fleeting glimpses, you can discern a few details. You notice the thing is coming nearer to you with each impossible sprint, and so more and more of these details begin to reveal themselves. They are not pleasant. The thing is unfamiliar, but it is nothing less than a predator. You only notice the look of hunger when it is quite close. Then it moves once more, and suddenly it is right in front of you. It is the last thing you ever see. Any biologist can tell you that life is often surprising and surprisingly violent at times. There are innumerable species that prey upon other species, and the methods of predation are remarkably varied. Some of the more unusual, and perhaps unexpected, can be seen among the insects. One such example is found in a family of beetles. Beetles are very familiar forms of life. Generally speaking, they have a somewhat clumsy reputation at times. This is perhaps to be expected, as these armored insects are usually not particularly agile or accomplished flyers. After all, it is difficult enough to get airborne to begin with. The armor plating only complicates matters all the more. Even so, the overall body design of the beetles is remarkably successful. Beetles are perhaps the most common form of animal life on the planet. There are well over 300,000 described species, comprising over 20% of all known species on Earth. One might ask what the basis of this success might be. For my part, at least, I would theorize it is the versatility of the beetle body plan. The front pair of wings in these insects is modified into a pair of hardened elytra, essentially armor plates protecting the back pair of wings and the underlying abdomen. This allows the creatures to burrow in all sorts of substrates that would otherwise damage the more delicate flying wings seen in other insect groups. A somewhat similar pattern is seen in cockroaches, which also have a toughened front pair of wings. It is difficult to dispute the success of these tenacious little creatures. Returning to the beetles, with so many species, one should expect considerable variety within the group. With such variation, at least some sorts of beetle must defy the usual expectations for the overall form. This is the case with a unique group of predatory beetles that pursue their prey using sheer running speed. The family is known as the Cicindelidae. More commonly, these vicious little predators are known as tiger beetles. The family name of Cicindelidae derives from the Latin term Cicindela, which roughly translates into glowworm. It is worth noting that actual glowworms are wingless insects with bioluminescence, often seen as larval forms or larviform females in the firefly family. Fireflies, incidentally, are also beetles within the family Lampyridae. Amusingly enough, Lampyrid is a Greek word that also roughly translates into glowworm. Now, the Cicindelids are not bioluminescent. However, some genera, most particularly the genus Cicindela, have many species with bold metallic coloration. Green is quite common, though shades of blue, purple, and copper can also be found. So, while the so-called glowworms of the Cicindelidae do not glow, many do at least shine. There was a time when the tiger beetles were classified within a larger beetle family, the Carabidae. Many of the species in this family are also iridescent, and like the tiger beetles, they are also predatory. More recent genetic and taxonomic studies have placed the tiger beetles within their own family, and this is probably just as well. 
Even within the Sisindelidae, there are over 2,500 different species, and they are found pretty much everywhere aside from Antarctica. The largest genus within this family is Sisindella, sometimes collectively known as common tiger beetles. This genus contains over 800 described species, and most follow what might be regarded as the standard pattern for a typical tiger beetle. Such creatures are often metallic, with oblong bodies and long slender legs. The heads are fairly large, with long antennae and prominent bulging eyes. The jaws are well developed, with sharply pointed serrations that are perfect for grasping prey quickly and securely. Tiger beetles in most of the other genera are often nocturnal hunters, but the Cisindella beetles typically hunt during the day. They prefer open patches of ground, and many species are partial to sandy terrain. Such beetles can be found on sand dunes, beaches, lake shores, or even open forest paths. In at least some cases, the eyes appear to be specialized to detect irregularities on the horizon, indicating potential prey. They seem relatively unbothered by heat and sunlight. Indeed, if anything, they appear to thrive in such conditions. I suspect that their long legs help with this. While such appendages are well suited for running, they would also be good for holding the insect well away from hot surfaces and transmitting relatively little heat along their narrow lengths. Whatever the actual mechanisms might be, these tiger beetles seem to be quite at home with the sun beating down on them. So on a warm, sunny afternoon in many parts of the world, one might even see these little creatures on a sidewalk or a driveway. They appear as little specks, maybe half an inch in length, basking in the sun and occasionally moving at tremendous speed in a series of brief sprints. If one approaches, these insects quickly take to the air to escape, and often land again a short distance away. Their vision is quite good after all, so they can detect an encroaching titan like a human quite easily. These beetles are agile flyers, at least by beetle standards, with reaction times on par with a typical housefly. Some species do hunt for prey on the wing, but the majority pursue their meals on the ground. They are specialized runners, which is honestly an uncommon and even unusual hunting strategy for an insect. Still, they are very well adapted for this and remarkably quick on their feet. To give some idea of just how fast these beetles are, the fastest documented tiger beetle and the fastest runner known among the insects is Cisindella hudsoni, found in Australia. It has been documented as traveling at about 9 kilometers per hour, or 5.6 miles per hour. That is a brisk jog for a human bordering on an outright run. This beetle is only about 2 centimeters long, though, if it were scaled up to human size, and its relative speed for its size was maintained, it would be just a little shy of breaking the sound barrier. On foot. Of course, that would never actually happen for several reasons. The physics at the beetle's size are much more forgiving for rapid starts and stops. At human sizes, the creature's internal organs would be pulped by that sort of extreme acceleration. It is just as well that the creature has a small mass and thus can start, stop, and turn quite rapidly without ill effect. As it turns out, though, the tiger beetles are a little too fast even at their smaller size. These things move so fast they can't see properly when they are at a full run. They have excellent vision, but their eyes cannot process the rapid changes in scenery while running at full speed. So they tend to pursue their prey in a series of short sprints, taking a moment to reorient themselves before running off again. Even if they are running blind, in a sense, they do still have their antennae. These are held out fairly rigidly as the creature runs, allowing it to detect obstacles just quickly enough to stop or turn to avoid them. 
So it's a bit like a human sprinter running flat out with their eyes closed and their arms outstretched, relying upon their quick reflexes to prevent them from smashing into anything. Even if the beetles did happen to collide with something, at their small size and mass, the fallout would likely be little more than a mild annoyance. This overall system works well enough for the tiger beetle, as they are quite successful hunters, literally running up to unsuspecting insects to snap them up in their jaws. Though the Cisandella jaws are certainly formidable, there is a related genus with even more impressive mandibles. The genus Manticora is found in Africa, particularly the more arid regions of southern Africa. The beetles in this genus are generally large and darkly colored, with squat bodies and massive jaws. Apparently, in certain traditions of African folklore, these beetles are regarded as wicked things and bad omens. Their jaws are perhaps reminiscent of the scythe of the Grim Reaper, though this is a tenuous connection at best. Despite such grim reputations within this genus, the truly horrifying creatures in the tiger beetle family are actually the larvae. Though the adults are vicious and effective predators in their own right, the larvae would be perfectly suited to the most gruesome of monster movies. Cisandella beetles often favor sandy environments, like lake shores or dunes, with lots of open ground. The larvae also have a liking for open ground, though they use the terrain completely differently. Each larva digs a burrow, sometimes up to a meter deep in the more extreme cases. The head is enlarged and flattened with heavy armor plating. The jaws are upturned, and the antennae and other mouth parts are similarly pointed upward. Behind this head, the rest of the body is relatively soft. There is a distinctive hump on the back of the fifth abdominal segment, often with forward pointing hooks and a series of associated bristles. The way this beetle larva works, it hunkers down at the entrance to its burrow, with its head forming a lid of sorts. Any creature of suitable size that comes close enough, or especially walks on top of this head, is immediately grasped in the upturned jaws and pulled down into the burrow to be eaten. If any larger creature tries to extract this larva from its home, it must contend with strong defensive measures. As stated before, the head itself is heavily armored to begin with. The bite isn't exactly pleasant either. The hooked hump on the creature's back allows the larva to hold itself inside the burrow without being easily pulled out. Basically, the creature would sooner be pulled apart than actually extracted. It can also retreat down its burrow at remarkable speed with a series of rapid undulations. All in all, the tiger beetles are remarkable little creatures, with unconventional hunting methods both as larvae and as adults. They are at once terrifying predators to other arthropods and delightful oddities to more human-scale observers. They also serve as wonderful examples of the variety and eccentricity found both among the beetles and within the natural world in general. Thank you for listening. I hope you have enjoyed this brief glimpse into the more unusual side of the natural world. If you wish to know more, here are a few things that might be worth looking into. If you found this enjoyable, feel free to leave a like. If you think others would enjoy this content, by all means, share. If you have something to say or ask about, honest comments are always welcome. If you wish to see more from this channel, a subscription would be most helpful. Until next time.